Okay, I've already made a previous video about why Leaf Spy is useful in validating a used Leaf's status, so I'm not going to repeat too much of that, and I'm not going to repeat getting your connection working. So I have a working connection, as evidenced by the number cycling at the bottom of the green square, or in the green rectangle. Um, normally I use it in the vertical orientation, not horizontal, so I'm not too used to this. So back to what I was saying about the used Leaf status. So um, if you see these uh, amp hour SOH and HX values, um, this can help you tell, uh, can help tell you what the level of degradation is on the battery, assuming it hasn't been the victim of a, a BMS uh, reset. Uh, normally, these SOH, HX, and amp hour values go down over time as the, uh, as the battery degrades, and really badly in hot climates, and not so badly in cooler climates. The VIN is there, which I've obscured as a setting for that, and you can use that to verify that the VIN matches that on the driver's side door sticker and on the plate near the uh, at the top of the dash. You can verify the odometer is within a mile or so of the dash odometer. The number of quick charges, well my car doesn't have the child inlet so it's zero. The number of L1 and L2 charges has quirks. I wouldn't really depend on that. Um, the other thing you can look at here is it says 8 millivolts. That's the delta between the highest and lowest cell. Uh, I've been told that when you're really low on battery, like below very low battery warning, which is the second warning, um, as you get close to turtle, that delta will go to hundreds of millivolts, and then that can help inform you whether or not you're going to hit the turtle and then run dead. Um, anyways, so other uses of this include, I think it's the most useful, for people that have a 2011 and 12 leaf, you don't have a percentage state of charge indicator. All you have is the stupid guessometer, as we call it, on the right side, which has distance to empty in miles or kilometers if you're in a metric system. It doesn't know anything about, um, you know, your your future driving. It only bases it on some recent history. So it goes all over the place. It's going to go, you know, down more than one mile for every mile driven on the highway and on the city streets it might go up or, or do the opposite and so on. So that's terrible. Um, so this GID value here um, is more granular than the 12 fuel bars you have on the right side. So let me turn on my car. Excuse me here. So I'm, I'm referring to the 12 fuel bars and the, the GOM is the 53 guessometer. Um, and then the capacity bars are, you know, these guys all the way on the right, which is related back to state of health and HX and amp hours. And you can look on places like um to get an idea of how close you are to losing another bar. Um, based upon S SOH, HX, and amp hours versus these bars, according to the 2011 service manual on the right side, the first bar is 15% and the others are 6.25%, not granular at all. You don't know if you're at the top, middle, or bottom of a bar. And that's the same problem with the fuel bars. You don't know, you know, you only have 12 segments on a 2011-12 leaf, and you have no idea if you're at the top, middle, or bottom of a bar. And my car wings are about to go off again. Okay, so anyways, so um, the GID value on a brand new battery that's 24 kilowatt hours is about 281 to 290 on a full charge. And very low battery, I'm sorry, low battery warning sounds at 49 GIDs and very low battery warning sounds at 24, I believe. Um, and then somewhere below that, you're gonna hit turtle. So anyways, what I was saying about the smarter GOM is this thing, I'm gonna, it's gonna, a bit difficult for me to operate my phone. Um, so this lets you say, okay, if I want to be down to low battery warning or very low battery warning or 5%, and you can change that even to something else like 1, 2, or 3% for a buffer, and let's say I need to go um, 40 miles. So you can use these buttons. So if I need to go 40 miles, probably on the safe side, what I should do is say, okay, 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So now, if I go to the dash display and reset my energy economy via the upper right button, if from this point forward, I drive at 3.8 miles per kilowatt or higher, I probably will be able to make it 40 miles, or 40.3 in this case. If I find that I'm not able to achieve 3.8, then I, need, need, I know I need to take steps to do so, such as slowing down, um, and turning off the heater, turning off the AC, whatever. So this is a lot more useful than the GOM that doesn't know squat. Um, let's see.
The other thing that's kind of helpful here is the battery temperature. So there's like a highest value, 71.2, the lowest is 70, this is all in Fahrenheit. 70.8 I believe is the average, my outside temp is 62.6, which is a little bit more instantaneous than what's on the dash display. So you can get an idea of what effect charging your battery at level one, level two, or Chatamo quick charge has, or leaving it outside in the sun, versus leaving it in a warm garage versus leaving it outside in a cooler night has and how long it takes for the battery to cool down it has a lot of thermal mass. Other things that are interesting, the 12.96 volts tells you the 12 volt bus voltage and there's little quirks like if you run the uh, if you run the windshield wipers, oh, maybe it's not going to do it now when I'm not plugged in, but in the past the 12 volt bus voltage, there we go, would go up for a little bit. That's the way Nissan does it um, when you run the wipers. So people in rainy areas probably have a 12 volt battery that's in better shape because they run their wipers a lot more. Um, I'm actually plugged in right now. So another thing that's useful is um, charging power. So according to the help, the first number 4.9 kilowatts is power going into the ba battery pack. And the second is what the charger is reporting and he says they're normally the same. Right now I have the heater on and I'm plugged into a 208 volt level two EVSC. So if I shut the heater off, let's see, it's doing a brief dip. I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, so I think the values are getting better. And if I shut the car off, I expect these to go even higher and it might take a bit. So this is kind of useful because when your car gets really close to full um, at on level two, somewhere around, somewhere above nine point, um, somewhere above 95% or so, the car starts ramping down to like four kilowatts, three, two, one, you know, even bouncing around. And at that point, when you're that low, it may not be worth your time to stick around and charge. Like if you're using public charging, when you're down to like three or two kilowatt charging power uh, versus full power. Um, let's see, another thing that's useful is, there's way more than this is you can go in with I'm using the pro version you can change these door lock settings like basically when it locks and unlocks um, let's see here go back you can change the headlight settings some of these don't apply if you don't have auto you can change uh, read the ECU version you can change the interior light settings um, I don't let's see here oh shoot you have to enable that via the service screen um, and you can also turn off the noise makers, the forward and reverse noises. And let's see here. Uh, also, you can read DTCs, which are the error codes on your car, if any. Um, and you can clear them if need be, but you need to read them first. I'm pressing on the brake because it, otherwise it's losing connection sometimes. Uh, for a lot of these, you may need to have the car powered on or in ready mode or, well, powered on. Um, there's so much more in here, like you can look at power consumption of various systems. I don't look at that. Some people may care. Also, there are logs, um, which I uh, frankly don't really look at, but sometimes people will care about the historical information as to amp hours, GIDs, and and what their state of health of their battery was, and when it started getting better, or you know, when it started hitting some value. So you can see here, when I was at, uh, I believe these are all my car and I hadn't plugged in anyone else's car. Like on 10, 16, 6, 2016, I was at 87% SOH. And then it went down to 86% at some point, you know, and then it went up to 88. Th these are all red from the car. I mean, this is what the car is reporting. Um, let's see, I hope that's about it. Um, I, I think by far the most useful for people is evaluating the um, condition of the battery um, and the temperature if you're interested in preserving the battery if you own the car and probably more so is the smarter guessometer to basically help you plan um, I need to go this far how many miles per kilowatt hour efficiency do I need to achieve to make it. Uh, and you really, in, I cannot stress this enough, a 2011 or 12 LEAF driver, um, if they are pushing it and running the battery low and finding and having range anxiety, 
they really, really have to have Leaf Spy because otherwise you're going in the dark. Oh, and one last thing is when the Gesso meter turns to dash, 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 and even worse, um, the percentage data charge display on the 2013s and above turns to dash, 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 all, all, you don't have any info. You're flying blind. But this GID reading will still be there, and, and you can see how close you are to dead. And you can also look back again at that... Um, um, at this graph, at the delta, the max delta, to de and then you can learn how close you will be to dead. People have stated that there's some minimum cell voltage at which the car will throw the turtle and then cut you off eventually, opening the contactor, basically, and you're dead at that point. So this min, uh, in this case, the min cell voltage is what you'd care about. And I don't think the average and max really matters at all in that case. Um, anyways, I hope this helps. Um, I tried to keep it short, but it's longer than I wanted to. Thanks for watching.